Have you ever considered how vast and diverse the languages of Africa are? What if there is a connection among them, a common ancestry? Today, we're going to explore an intriguing hypothesis that suggests just that, the Niger-Congo languages hypothesis. This proposes a shared linguistic route across numerous African languages, a testament to the interconnectedness of our world and our cultures. It's a journey into the heart of language, history, and humanity itself. So let's delve deeper into this fascinating linguistic hypothesis called the Niger-Congo Languages Hypothesis. To understand the Niger-Congo Languages Hypothesis, we must first grasp the concept of language families. At its core, a language family is a group of languages that share a common ancestor. Just like people, languages have lineage. They evolve, change, and sometimes give birth to new languages over time. Now consider the Niger-Congo Languages Hypothesis. This is a hypothesis that suggests a large group of languages spread across sub-Saharan Africa share a common ancestor. It's a bit like tracing your family tree back to a single patriarch or matriarch, but for languages. The Niger-Congo family, as proposed, is one of the largest in the world, both in terms of geographical coverage and number of languages. It spans from West Africa, across the continent, and into East Africa, encompassing over 1,500 different languages. That's more languages than there are in any other language family on the planet. This diversity of languages, according to the hypothesis, can be traced back to a single proto-language. This hypothetical common ancestor, much like that patriarch or matriarch in your family tree, is believed to have existed thousands of years ago. Over time, as communities moved, interacted, and adapted to new environments, this proto-language gradually evolved into the myriad of languages we see today. In essence, the Niger-Congo languages hypothesis is a linguistic map that shows how languages in sub-Saharan Africa may be related. It's a guide that helps us understand how languages can evolve and spread, and how cultures can interact and influence each other over time. It's important to remember however that this is a hypothesis. While there is substantial evidence supporting it, there are also many questions left to answer and debates to be had. But that's the beauty of language and linguistics, isn't it? They're ever-evolving fields of study that keep us questioning, exploring, and learning. The Niger-Congo Languages Hypothesis is an intriguing hypothesis that opens up a world of linguistic connections. The story of the Niger-Congo Languages Hypothesis begins with a man named Joseph Greenberg. A man of great intellect and curiosity, Greenberg was a linguist who spent most of his career studying the languages of the world. His work in the mid-20th century brought a revolutionary perspective to African linguistics, as he sought to unravel the complex web of languages spread across the continent. Greenberg was notably intrigued by Africa's linguistic diversity, which prompted him to embark on a comprehensive study of African languages. It was during this study that he began to observe patterns and similarities among various languages, leading him to the formation of the Niger-Congo languages hypothesis. Greenberg's hypothesis proposed that a large number of African languages, spread across a vast geographical area, could be traced back to a common ancestor. He classified African languages into four major families, Afro-Asiatic, Nilo-Saharan, Khoisan, and Niger-Congo. The Niger-Congo family, according to Greenberg, was the largest of these, encompassing languages spoken from West Africa all the way to East Africa and South Africa. In Greenberg's view, these Niger-Congo languages shared similar grammatical structures and vocabulary, suggesting a common linguistic heritage. He believed that these similarities were not merely coincidental, but indicative of a shared origin. This was a bold claim that challenged prevailing views of the time, but Greenberg was not deterred. His classification system, though initially met with skepticism, gradually gained acceptance among linguists. Today, it serves as the basis for much of our understanding of African linguistics. Through his work, Greenberg not only brought order to the chaos of African languages, but also sparked a new interest in their study. Greenberg's work laid the foundation for further research into the Niger-Congo languages hypothesis. His groundbreaking ideas have since spurred a wealth of research, opening new vistas in our understanding of Africa's rich linguistic tapestry. The Niger-Congo languages hypothesis is more than just a hypothesis about common ancestry. It's an intricate tapestry woven with threads of linguistic features that span across sub-Saharan Africa. Some of these threads are so unique that they provide compelling evidence of a common ancestor. Let's start with one of the most distinctive features of the Niger-Congo languages, noun classes. This is a system where nouns are grouped into different classes, 
often based on characteristics such as gender, animate or inanimate, and shape. For example, in Swahili, a widely spoken Niger-Congo language, nouns like mtoto, child, and mwanamke, woman, belong to the same class because they're both humans. This noun class system is not unique to Swahili. It's a shared feature across many Niger-Congo languages. Now let's move on to another significant feature, verb extensions. These are affixes added to the verb root to provide additional information. For instance, in Shona, another Niger-Congo language, the verb enda means go. But when you add the causative extension is, it becomes endisa, which means cause to go or send. This ability to modify verbs is another common thread that spans across the Niger-Congo language family. These linguistic features are like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Individually, they might not seem like much, but when you put them all together, they form a coherent picture. They offer insights into how these languages have evolved over time and how they might have originated from a common ancestor. Moreover, these features are not just random artifacts of language development. They're systematic, consistent, and they're found across a vast geographical area. This strongly suggests that these languages did not develop these features independently, but rather inherited them from a common linguistic ancestor. These linguistic features paint a vivid picture of a shared linguistic history across sub-Saharan Africa. Like any good hypothesis, the Niger-Congo language's hypothesis has sparked its share of debate. This hypothesis, like many others in the realm of linguistics, is not free from criticism and controversy. These debates, though often heated, are a crucial part of the scientific process, driving us towards a deeper understanding of our world and its languages. One major point of contention among scholars pertains to the lack of shared vocabulary across the proposed Niger-Congo language family. Critics argue that the significant variations in vocabulary among these languages challenge the idea that they all sprang from a common ancestor. If these languages truly share a familial bond, wouldn't they also share a larger pool of common words? Another bone of contention is the inconsistencies in grammatical structures. Languages within the Niger-Congo hypothesis exhibit a wide array of grammatical rules, some of which appear to be at odds with each other. Critics question how languages from the same family can have such diverse syntax and grammar rules. This, they argue, casts doubt on the validity of the Niger-Congo language family hypothesis. However, proponents of the hypothesis argue that these differences can be attributed to linguistic drift and regional influences. They insist that despite the variations, there are enough similarities in verb conjugation, noun classification, and other syntactic elements to support the hypothesis of a shared origin. In the face of these debates, it's crucial to remember that language is an ever-evolving entity, influenced by myriad factors such as migration, cultural exchange, and even climate. It's this constant evolution that makes the study of languages such a fascinating field. So while the Niger-Congo languages hypothesis has its critics, it also has its champions. Both sides contribute to the ongoing dialogue pushing the boundaries of our knowledge and understanding. After all, it's through questioning and exploring that we make new discoveries and gain deeper insights. These debates serve to enrich our understanding of the Niger-Congo languages hypothesis and remind us that in the world of linguistics, there is always more to explore. The Niger-Congo languages hypothesis has far-reaching implications beyond the realms of linguistics. It serves as a bridge that connects the diverse cultures, histories, and societies within Africa. Its influence is deeply rooted, not just in how we perceive African languages, but also in how we understand the continent's rich tapestry of cultures and histories. The Niger-Congo languages hypothesis has reshaped our understanding of Africa's history. It credence to the notion of a shared linguistic heritage across the continent, implying a deeper historical among diverse African societies. It proffers the idea that, despite geographical and cultural differences, there's a common thread binding these societies together. In terms of culture, the hypothesis has been instrumental in unveiling the complex interplay of languages and cultures in Africa. It's like a key, unlocking the doors to a myriad of unique cultures and revealing how they influence and are influenced by the languages they speak. Furthermore, the hypothesis has had a significant impact on our understanding of Africa's social structures. It suggests that language is not merely a tool for communication, but a social construct that reflects societal norms, values, and hierarchies. In essence, the Niger-Congo languages hypothesis is more than a theoretical construct. 
It's a framework that provides valuable insights into the linguistic, cultural, and historical connections across Africa. The Niger-Congo languages hypothesis, while a hypothesis, serves as a lens through which we can view and appreciate the rich tapestry of African languages and cultures. Before we end this video, if you found this information interesting and want to delve deeper into the rich cultures, languages, and histories of Africa, don't forget to hit the like button. Also, do subscribe to our channel for more fascinating insights about Africa. Make sure you click the notification bell so you won't miss any of our subsequent videos. Thank you for watching, and remember, I am because we are, and since we are, therefore I am.